Today I'd like to talk about urban forestry. What could be more natural than putting a tree in your yard? Right here next to me I got my arm wrapped around one of my favorite koa trees. This is a, was a seed that was brought back here to my yard in 2004 from the big island of Hawaii. It is a Hawaiian koa tree. It's one of the most valuable hardwood trees grown in the United States of America. And uh, I've decided that they grow really well here in the California Bay Area, so I've been using them as landscape plants in my yard. The point I'd like to make about the difference between just planting a tree and urban forestry is that in urban forestry, we've chosen trees for a variety of different reasons. In this particular case, we've done that because the wood that the tree contains is valuable. There could be other reasons why a person would choose a tree to put into their yard. Sometimes trees bear nuts, sometimes they produce fruit. There's all sorts of different good reasons why you might want to have a tree around. This tree right here is a navel orange. An orange tree is another excellent plant to consider for urban forestry and the landscape. The tree will offer you fragrant flowers. It will offer a nice, compact, evergreen plant to grow in the yard. Uh, it's also outstanding as far as the fruit that it produces. So if you don't live in part of the world where citrus trees grow, like this Mineola tangelo, you might want to consider using something hardier. Generally, the apple uh, is considered to be a very hardy plant and will grow in almost all states in the United States of America. It also grows across most of Europe. Right here is an application in my yard where we've utilized apples as a hedgerow along one side of the property line. Some people might have used privet shrubs they may have used Italian cypress or some other sort of a plant that really didn't have any other desirable qualities about it. When considering things in urban forestry, we would look at other values that the plant might have when we're putting it into the landscape. In some cases, it's going to be strictly for the wood, in the case of the Hawaiian koa tree. In the case of apples, it's going to be mostly for the fruit that it yields and for other functional aspects. In this case here, the apples produce a really nice screen for me against the post office, which is just over the other side of the fence. Careful selection of the trees that we put in the yard will allow for an enhanced state of existence. In the case of these apples, I can visualize and foresee the wonderful fruit that will come later this year, but currently we have apple blossoms right in our face, and so they're almost as nice as having the fruit itself this time of year. As spring is waking up, we're surrounded by the perfume and the nice gentle white-pink flowers drifting in the air around us. Japanese persimmon is another excellent urban forestry choice. They have almost no insects or diseases. The plants are very trouble free and they produce very delicious sugary fruits that can be harvested and have a variety of different uses. The plants grow fairly slow and so they're really pretty good choices in an urban environment. Nut trees like this macadamia nut tree are another excellent choice. Again, the plant blocks the west wind coming into my landscape. It also blocks an undesirable view, a lot of lights and noise at the post office behind us. Uh, and so it has practical applications that go beyond the fact that it produces it's the macadamia nut, which is so expensive. It has a fabulous perfume, and believe it or not, the wood from a macadamia nut tree is quite nice. Another excellent choice of a nut tree for most of our landscapes is the walnut. So whether you live in the eastern United States and you might grow the native black walnut or you might be growing a Carpathian walnut, if you live here in the western United States you could raise the native black walnuts here or in this case we have an English walnut which is much easier to crack. Uh, the wood in these trees is uh, is highly prized. 
there's a lot that can be done with it even though this plant does not have a tall straight trunk some of the unusual joints in the tree when the wood is harvested will actually create some very very interesting grain patterns that will work very nicely on smaller objects like bowls coffee tables uh, maybe even a guitar body here's another Hawaiian koa tree uh, it's six years old from a seed uh, the plant is at this point I believe pretty close to 30 feet high in the air uh, we have a trunk diameter here of uh, probably about 10 inches at the base already. Uh, plant was planted back from a seed in about 2006 or so. Uh, this is now 2012, so they grow like crazy. Um, again, the most desirable and most valuable hardwood in the United States of America. Over here is another tree, it's another koa, approximately the same age. These are definitely underutilized in California because the plants will thrive here. Um, they work really well as screens and boundary plants. I'm using this one to help block north wind coming into my property here. It also uh, blocks a little bit of the sound from the local McDonald's. Would you like fries with that? Koa tree should be harvestable for the lumber in approximately 25 years, uh, which is just about the same time frame that most of us begin to panic after we've planted uh, Italian cypress or California redwoods in a landscape over here because we are looking for a screen. Uh, we begin panicking because the trees become too large and then usually we'll send in a crew of tree butchers. It would be better if they just harvested the darn things rather than the butchery that they'll actually do to trees trying to size them back down. My suggestion is rather go through that entire process, I think it's kind of silly, uh, is that instead we plant something that will fill the bill, uh, grow in that space, perform a function for us, and then when the plant becomes too large, we harvest it. Another excellent choice in urban forestry is the avocado tree. Avocados grow very well here in coastal California. Uh, they're excellent choices of plants. They produce the uh, wonderful oily fruits that we all know and love that make guacamole and salads and so on. We got a little bit of rice and some beans and a tortilla and uh, an avocado here all set. And so these make, again, excellent urban forestry plants. Lime over here is another outstanding choice as being a plant to have in a landscape here. Limes are always valuable in the market. Uh, they're nice acid material, good for cleaning tools and cutting boards, and uh, wow, what could taste better than limes in a drink? Cherry is another one of the outstanding urban forestry trees. The wood in cherry trees is fabulous. It has an extreme value. The fruit from cherries is, as we all know, absolutely delicious. The flowers are attractive. This particular tree happens to have a burl growing on the side of it right here. Uh, it's going to produce a nice warty batch of wood that whenever I take this tree out of the landscape and replace it, um, this particular piece of wood will be a cherry burl that will uh, have a pretty good value. Here's another excellent tree for urban plantings. Uh, this is the pawpaw, Asamina triloba. It's a native North American fruit tree. It produces a fruit that's very exotic and tropical in flavor. It has almost no insects and no diseases that I know of in California. The plant uh, is slow growing. This one here is probably 15 years old. It doesn't get terribly large. This has hardly ever been pruned. So it's not a problem in small landscapes. Uh, outstanding urban forestry tree, the pawpaw. Um, as for other trees that say don't produce wood or fruit, we have a Japanese maple over here, the Crimson Queen. Um, this is a, uh, a really a marvelous tree. It's strikingly beautiful, the lacy red foliage. It's also very small. This tree is 20 years old. Um, it's just a little higher than my head. Over here next to it is a form of a weeping birch. Uh, they grow side by side there. Uh, that tree is just a couple feet over the top of the six foot fence here. Uh, 
you're going to put trees in and you don't have any specific application, like it's not going to be a fruit tree or a nut tree, or you're not going to use the wood, consider using trees like these that stay very, very small for many, many, many years. It will never create huge problems in your landscape. I am not opposed to trees that are strictly ornamental and don't have other applications. This is Emperor One, the Japanese maple. Uh, again, small and slow growing maple tree. Uh, it has fabulous color to it and it's a fairly rigorous tree. It will put up with conditions here quite easily. Uh, I think it's an absolutely gorgeous tree and it's again another good choice in a landscape. Uh, if you're not looking for flowers or fruit then you just want an exceedingly beautiful tree that won't overwhelm your life in short order, Emperor One Japanese Maple is a good one. Right over here next to it we have a twisted locust tree. Uh, the branches are all corkscrewed up there. It's called Twisty Baby. It's a contorted Robinia. Urban forestry is the economic implication of the trees that we put into our landscapes. And before we go ahead and put a tree, if we think about what the value of that tree might hold for us over the years, or what the expenses of the tree might be. Some trees are susceptible to diseases and insects. Obviously these plants are going to cost you money over time to correct those issues. You would probably want to stay away from them. Some plants will grow way too large for the environment that you're trying to use them in. That's a very common mistake. Somebody will have a view that they want to fill in quickly and so they'll tell the nurseryman, oh I need a fast growing tree. Well the fast growing tree doesn't stop at the 20 feet you needed it to. It continues growing onwards towards 120. So now you've got a hundred foot of trouble on your hand that you'll probably end up calling in some tree trimmer uh, every couple of years to try to size the thing down and the inevitable cost of that plant will be huge. It will also be quite ugly most of the time once they get done hacking away at it. And so if we look at trees and say, well, this tree will produce avocados, there's a net worth. Or this tree will produce apples in our landscape. Or this tree produces a nut that's delicious. Let's use the nut tree in place of just some shade tree because we'll get a double purpose from it. And if we have to trim it or control diseases, at least we can say, well, we've been harvesting walnuts off of this thing for 20 years. As I said, behind me here, my favorite urban foresty tree in the Bay Area is the Hawaiian Kala tree. This stuff is worth up to $250 a board foot for really prime grade koa. They don't give this away. It is the most valuable hardwood tree grown in the United States. Traditionally, it's only been grown in the wild on the big island of Hawaii and on parts of Maui. Uh, I've experimented with the tree. I've brought it here into the urban landscape in the Bay Area and find out that it thrives here. Uh, there's no reason we shouldn't be growing this tree. And so, as I say, 25 years down the road, when the tree is too large, we just go in, we harvest the tree, we sell the wood, we net a profit. These are my 401k trees, Hawaiian colors. Uh, there are others. There are so many different trees. That just think about it. But urban forestry is something that is on the up. It's beginning to grow. Ten years ago, a search on the internet yielded almost nobody in the business. Today, we actually have some mills in urban areas that will handle the urban lumber. We also have a few people who harvest wood in a specialty way to be able to reuse this instead of just cutting it down and sending it to uh, become compost or firewood. And so there's a bright future in it. Uh, I'd say that the brightest future for America's forests are actually in our urban and suburban landscapes. In your own yard is the first place to start with a forest. Thanks for listening.